1852. The world is in the middle of a cholera pandemic. 10,000 people have died in the city of London alone, more than 15,000 in Mecca, and over a million people in Russia. And then comes along a scientist named John Snow. Different from the John Snow you're probably thinking of. He says that it's water contamination that's causing the sickness. But of course, people don't believe him at the time. In fact, it wasn't until almost a century after that governments realized that we need to treat our wastewaters to prevent sickness. Fast forward to today. It's not the water, but it's the air that's killing our planet. Over 2,500 climate scientists have warned us of the devastating effects of climate change and that we need to treat our air. But then there are others who say, do you know how much it costs to treat the air? We can't afford to do this. But can we afford not to do this? Studies have shown that the effects of climate change can cost over $500 billion every year in the US alone. So how much does it cost us to stop this? 1% of the GDP. That's less than the money we spend on Christmas Day alone. Now all that being said, I have some great news for you. I know how to fix this. It's simple. We have to stop putting CO2 into the atmosphere. Anybody could have guessed that, right? But to be fair, I did say it was simple, but didn't say it was easy. So how do we stop putting CO2 into the atmosphere? Well, ultimately, we're going to have to abandon fossil fuels and run the world on renewable energy. But even in the most optimistic scenarios, that's not going to happen for at least another half a century. So what's the plan until then? That's exactly what I'm doing for my research. See, most of that emitted CO2 comes from burning fossil fuels in power plants to produce electricity. My research is aimed at capturing the CO2 from power plants and putting it deep under the ground where it belongs. This process is called calcium looping, and it uses a solid sorbent to capture the CO2. Now the problem is that these sorbents lose their ability to capture CO2 over time. The reason for this loss is the exposure of these sorbents to high temperatures, which results in the destruction of the porous structure. In my experiments, I've added zirconium to the structure of these calcium-based sorbents, which enhances the thermal resistance. The results from my experiments indicate that not only these sorbents exhibit a higher surface area and porosity, but they're also more stable when tested in 50 cycles of experiments. These lab experiments are stepping stones towards industrial application of this process and lowering our carbon footprint. In the end, that's not enough to stop climate change, and it comes down to each and every one of us and the decisions that we make that shapes the future of the Earth. So the brush is in our hands. How are we going to paint 2050?